second, uh, uh, second week of our last lesson from series number four. And we know series number four from the seed series, which C stands for spiritual elements essential for discipleship, right? And series four had to deal with discipleship and spiritual gifts. And we have taken these last eight months or seven, yeah, this is our eighth month in this, in this course of study. And we really had, the Lord has really given us a, a great opportunity to learn more about him and about what he has done on our behalf. Because we, we, we quickly found out that we didn't do anything to merit the gifts of God. Uh, it wasn't because of my family name. It wasn't because I was a good guy. None of that. God purposed in his own heart to give me certain gifts when he gave me the Holy Spirit to live with in, inside of me. And every one of us that has accepted Jesus Christ has the Holy Spirit living inside of me. Amen. Uh, that happened on that day. When you accepted Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God came to live inside of you. Amen. And with him... That's why we all can testify the fact that every believer in the body of Christ has at least one gift. Because the Spirit himself is the gift, right? And, but we've come to figure out and to learn that the list of gifts is the scripture talks about the manifestation of the Spirit shows up in this wise. So when you look at the, the, the list of gifts like uh, prophets, uh, evangelists, apostles, uh, teachers, um, helps, uh, hospitality, all those gifts are the expression of the Holy Spirit in your life. And uh, we make that uh, known or, or that break that down so that we can all know that we have the ability to grow in our giftedness. As we walk humbly before God and as we make ourselves available, and as we do in through obedience, all that God is asking us to do through his power, because that's what the gifts are. That's a supernatural empowerment by God to accomplish what he's purposed in the earth realm. That's what spiritual gifts are. And when we do that, then we're now being good stewards of his resources. And we know that he rewards that. Uh, it's at least, what, two or three parables in the Bible with the, with the talents and with the, uh, the land. Well, when the person was faithful, they were rewarded with greater gifts. Because the principle or the precept of God is if you're faithful in a little thing, then he can trust you with, with, with much more. But there is that whole proving, proving process, which is a part of our development as Christians, Right. So as we've taken this time to go through these uh, uh, lessons about uh, our, our gifts and who gave them, who determines what gifts we have and how to walk in them, we find ourselves on the last lesson, which is very, very much appropriate. Because the last lesson uh, is, in, is session number eight, and it's entitled, Love Jones, Ministering Through the Greatest Gift. Okay? And um, I, I went back, and because last week I couldn't, I, can't, I had two songs in my mind when I remembered that, because I remember that song, Love Jones. Mm -hmm. But I went back and I looked it up, and you know, that's from the, the brightest side of darkness. <laughs> and I was, when I thought about that, I said, like, ooh, just think. Uh, until we came into to, to Jesus Christ, we were in darkness. Right. You know, but because of his love, God placed us in a whole new relationship, mm -hmm. and he gave us work to do, mm -hmm. Right? If you're not saved, then you don't have spiritual gifts. Right. You may have natural talents, but you don't have spiritual gifts because the Holy Spirit's not living inside of you. So, so when I thought about that song and I thought about that, it made sense that from the brighter side of darkness came the whole idea of a love Jones. Because when we think about that old song, it was just talking about how much they couldn't wait to be in the company of whoever that person right. was how much they was missing being with them, right? And when you, and the reality is when you love someone, then you want to spend time with them in fellowship, right. right? And I tell you something else, when you really love them, uh, even if you don't like stuff, you start trying to develop a taste for it <laughs> just so you can make them happy by presenting the thing that they like, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's something you can't stand. 
But love will drive you to a place where you will be trying to go out of your way intentionally to do some things to make that relationship better, right? Okay, so now when you think about that in the context of walking in our giftedness, right? Anything we do, first of all, we should be imitators of God, right? Uh, we looked at that passage from Ephesians and Ephesians 5, where Paul had told them, be ye imitators of God, okay? And in that same passage, he goes on to talk about be children of light, right? Not of darkness. Because God is light. And we're supposed to reflect him in our, everything that we do, right? In fact, everything we do, it should be as done as unto the Lord, right? Amen. So when we think about walking in our giftedness, one of the greatest filters that we can have to keep our ego and our purpose, our ego in check and our purpose in line is the motivation of love. Amen. Everything that God did for us the Bible says, was motivated by divine love. God so loved the world that he gave. See, so he, not only did he have this, this conscious, emotional, directed will, but he expressed it in something tangible, an action, right? So when we say about love, and women know this for sure, some guys say he loves you, but he don't pay no bills, he running out your gas and you got to get him a sandwich every other day, then do he love you? The ladies are shaking their head. I take that as a no. <laughs> no, we, we understand that, that, that with, without action, then it's empty. Okay? So, and, 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 and when we look at, if you look at Romans 13, when Paul was talking about and wrapping up the whole thing about gifts, he said in that chapter that if I spoke with the with the voice of angels, right. you know, and if I you know, if I could preach like Paul, if I could if I could do all these great things, even if I gave my life and I didn't have love, it was nothing. It, it, I was just making noise, right? So it's empty. Without love, it's empty. It's not. For God, it's not a representative of anything God is doing if it's not motivated by love. And so when we think about that, we have to think of it from a, the, the biblical perspective of love and that you want the best for the person involved. Because yeah. Yeah, we got a great amount of self-love. And for accolades and for recognition, a lot of people will try to walk in a giftedness that may not be of God. Okay. We will try to do stuff for people to like us or for people to pat you on the back, but not motivated by divine love. And then you wonder why it's empty. Okay, So our, our uh, passage, uh, our C verse for this, for this lesson series is coming out of 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. And can I have one of you to read that when you get there? First Corinthians, if you have your book, it's on page 33. Otherwise, it's First Corinthians 13, 13. The same, Brother Phil? Mm -hmm. Now, these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. Mm -hmm. But the greatest of these is love. Right. Okay. And again, Paul had went through a list, and I think in that list he named about 11 or 12 spiritual gifts. And then, but he, when he, as he was wrapping it up, he wanted to point out what the most important ones were. Okay? And when you look at it, it's faith, hope, and love. Right? And we know without faith, the Bible says it's impossible to please God. That's the word. See, so you can't even be in a right relationship with God without faith. Amen. Even though faith comes from him. Yeah. It's a spiritual gift. He gives each one of us a measure of faith. God does that, right? And so if we don't respond to that in the right way, then we automatically just out of order to begin with, right? And you will be hopeless from that position. Because in truth, you're, you're in enmity with God. You're hostile. You're at war with God. And that's a battle you can't win. You know, they used to say that old saying that your arms are too short to box with God. Right? Man, you can't even get close. You know, I mean, that's a losing proposition. 
So and then so that last one goes on to the to the thing that, that's most connected. And that's love. And it's divine love, agape. And either form when you think about that, it's a, it's a conscious direction of your will. It's not just, because when you really love somebody, you will love them on their worst day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on the day that they're on your last nerve. Mm -hmm. You'll still move on their behalf. Because love will cause you to do that. That's right. right? So that's why that is crucial that in, in, even as we're as we come to an end on this whole study about our discipleship and, and the gifts that God has given us, uh, when you think about it, and we talked about this last week, but I have to go over it again because number one, just reiterating it helps us. But it's a stewardship issue, you know. And the three words that we had to know was debt, fulfill, and love. You know, when you realize that you were about to be damned forever, but God. But God. That, that elicits something in your spirit. You know, if any one of us in this room were on death row, we were about to be executed this morning, and somebody came at the, we was getting executed at daybreak, so at 5.45 this morning, we were to be executed, and at 5.40, somebody came in and said, there's a guy that testified and has willingly taken your place in the executioner's chair. Without knowing who that person was or whatever, I'm already in love with them. Because they just delivered me from sure death. You know, they just brought me out of a place that I had no way of escape. But that's what Jesus did for us. See? So there's a debt to pay. He paid the debt for our sins. And so as a true believer, we understand the one thing between religion and Christianity is true Christians understand that we don't work to be saved. We work because we're saved. And, and we work with the tools and the, and the gifts that God has given us. Okay? But still the whole interconnectedness has to be in place about love. Okay? So we looked at, so when we talked about planting the seed, and we went over that last week, but we want to go over that a little bit today because we got an extra week in this month. Uh, it says that uh, God's love for mankind has been evident since the beginning of time. Actually, God's love existed before the beginning of time. Before the beginning, God knew he was going to create humankind in his own image. And when he created humankind, he knew humans would sin. You know, oftentimes we think about like that whole thing in the garden like it was plan B. But since God knows everything from the beginning, he already knew that Adam and was going to mess it up. He knew that we were going to need a Savior. That's why even in the garden, he was already foretelling about the day when his son would come and he would crush the head of the serpent. You know, he was already foretelling about a Savior coming that would deliver us from eternally from our sins. Because he loved us even before he had created us. And he knew that we were marred, that there was something in our character that needed to be replaced. And the good thing about it is, is he was patient and he and sh showed long suffering with us. Yeah, when you think about the, the, the people throughout history that have God has broken out on and destroyed. And I say it that way because we, one thing we know about God's character is that God is holy, right? Yeah. And in the presence of sin, God has two choices. He can either forbear or he can break out on us, right? right? And if he break out on us, we would be like Ananias and Sapphira, right. dead on the spot. Right? So he forbears. He, he sees the blood of Jesus Christ over us. And he keeps us because of that. And I'm I, I reminded of what he told us in Malachi. He says that he don't change. And because of that, we're not consumed. Amen. See, if, if he had went back on his word, if he changed his mind, then all the promises in, 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 that he had made for our grandparents and our parents on our behalf, would have been null and void. Right. Our behavior would have written all of that out. Right, yeah. 
But God in his grace has still given us in spite of all that we've done wrong. Right? So when we think about that and we look at that, that kind of, it says, so it says, uh, what is our response to, to his command? Because he, 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 not, he created us and he loves us anyway. And he commands us to love others in the same manner in which he loves us. Yeah. Now, if we're honest, is that an easy commandment? No. It's, it's easily said. Yeah. But when you put shoe leather to that, that's difficult even in your own house. You know, if you think I'm joking, you have your favorite little something, and it get down close to the end, uh, you'll try to hide that thing so nobody won't eat it. I'm the only somebody to do that. Right? <laughs> that favorite little slice of pie. So you, you may put that one back over in the corner or something. So it'll still be there when you wake up after your nap. We got some selfishness inside of us is what I'm saying. You know, something that we'll think of it as self-preservation or whatever. But there's a limit to how much love I'm going to show you. Okay? But God's not that way. See? And uh, one of our resources for the seed, for the, for the, for the resources to, uh, for, the, uh, for the seed, which is what we're about to look at now, is coming out of Mark 12, 29 through 30. And in the Hebrew, I think they call it the Shema, which is the ultimate promise or, or, or purpose for God, you know, for man toward God, right? And, uh, and, and if you look at that, uh, uh, some, it's right there in your book on page 34, that first one. Uh, with Sister Butler, Sister Butler, you can read it from your Bible if you got it. Uh, Mark 12, 29 and 30. What does it say? It says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first command. And the second is like namely this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself there is none other communication commandment greater than this right and look at that and it's not an accident that it starts with the i and thou relationship mm -hmm. because you know what if i don't love god intentionally right. and fight to love god right. i'll have a real hard time dealing with you right. Because I won't want to. You know, we are quick to write people off. That's right. Come on. But because of the cross, I can't write nobody off. That's right. God loved them enough to die for them. That's good. So how can I now write you off? Mm -hmm. See, But it starts with that. If I, if I can't get that part of it right, then no man can love his wife the way God intends if he don't love God. It's just not possible. There, there, there will be a time when you put her out on the side of the highway. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you don't love God. I'm saying, because you, you're going to fall out. There's, Mom and them used to say, tongue and teeth fall out, and they in the same head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had to think about that. She said, well, think about it. Every now and then when you chew a gum, you, things will get out of order, and you will whack your tongue. She said, now, now you're not going to get rid of it because you whack it every now and then, are you? Mm -hmm. And you're not. Because you love you. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly, yeah. Well, the Bible says that a man should love his wife like his own flesh. That's right. That's right. See? And who loving his own flesh would nurture it. That's right. See? So that love, that whole conscious thing, has to be, from a God's perspective, or dealing with your spouse is a real burden. Because yeah. we're selfish beings. Okay? But we're talking about how this relates to the to because it with our gifts. If the greatest of all these is love, and then now he Jesus himself was saying, This is the most important commandment of all. And the next one is right the same. And it's it's love for my fellow man. So now I don't have a problem with using the gifts of God to build up everybody because I love y'all just like God loves. See? And if anything that I could do to be of a service to help the development, then I'm all for that. 
You know, even if it costs me something, even if it means that I gotta stay up and read when you sleep. You know, if I gotta prepare, if I gotta go through something in order for the Lord to use as an example. You know, that love drives that thing through to where I'm glad to do it. It's not a burden at all. It's really even a more of a burden when I'm not teaching and stuff than it is when I'm just programmed in. It just is. Okay, so then like the next one we had was Romans 13 and 8. And this is very important too. Because again, this is a God perspective deal. A resource for the same. And uh, sister, would you give me that one? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Let no doubt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another for he who loves his fellow men has fulfilled the law. Right. Now, if we're honest, we don't like to think that we owe anybody anything. In fact, if you really owe somebody, you ever notice when people owe you, they'll stop coming around? <laughs> <laughs> Even if you ain't asking them for it. Even if you told them, you can go on and have that. That whole thing of being indebted to somebody is goes against the natural grain of the unregenerated man. It does. And unfortunately, even as a saved saint, I have to remind myself to be, be thankful and joyful. That's why I said we should always enter into God's course with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. He left you alive. Okay? So I don't care how bad a day it is, there's 200 and some thousand people that would change places with you. And I'm just talking about the COVID victims. See? So there's a reason to be thankful at all times because of God's mercy and grace is every morning. It's renewed every day. But this whole thing about there's a debt to pay. See, and he said the only debt that we really want to keep is the debt to love. I'm obligated to love you. Even when, even when you make me angry. That doesn't take away my obligation because he, I, I got to be tenderhearted towards you, forgiving you, just like God has, for Christ's sake, That's forgiven right. me. Right. You know, because he ties those two things together. You notice how he tied our forgiveness with the way we forgive one another. That's right. But in our, fam in our natural families, in the church family, there will be instances where hurt, disappointment will make that very difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm reminded, even as prophets, he, you look at Jonah. Jonah was filled with some righteous indignation against the Ninevites because the Syrians was dogging them and was killing them. And he was prejudiced against them. And even though God had a message of deliverance, he didn't want to take it. Right, right. And you say, well, what are you talking about? We got some prejudice stuff in us too. Amen. You know, if there's somebody at work, because like, even now, I'm going to be honest, I'll be looking at people and I'll be thinking, you voted for so-and-so? And my whole mind kind of different. You know, I look at them different. And, and I know that's wrong. Right. That's wrong. You know, but it's just a natural thing in you, you know, and you and so uh, when God if God said, Go talk to them about my son. And then you're like, No, nah, they got it together, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't operate like that. <laughs> See, that's how the whole thing about love and loving God. Yeah. See, even if I can't stand you. Because I love God and he loved you enough to die for you, he saw value in you. Okay? So now, if he wants to use me to try to enhance that for his glory, then I should be anxious to get involved with that. You know, trust in him to give me grace in your eyes. So number one, you're not going to just remember all the bad between us. But that you will be open to the message that he told me to give you. Because why would he send me to you if you're not open to the message? Mm -hmm. See, but it, 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 but you notice how the whole thing is tied to my attitude and my response to God's call? Mm -hmm. And I'm just putting myself in there so that you can put your name in that spot. Mm -hmm. right. 
Because God be calling every one of us. There's somebody in your area that maybe you don't smell right. That, you know, that said something to you kind of cross and you think they was coming at you. You weren't quite sure, but you won't keep your eye on them next time. Mm -hmm. And you know, that might be the very person with whom God wants you to, to show hospitality yeah. to. Or that God wants you to give a word of wisdom to. Right. You know? And it will take something to move past your, your physical emotions to be useful in God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. And we need to start thinking on that. Yeah. So then we had two more from that, and then that, that pretty much will wrap up. Well, we got a little bit more time, so I guess we'll touch part of nurturing the seed. But we got uh, two more. It was like First Peter uh, 4 and 8. We're looking at the resources for the seed. First Peter 4 and 8. Uh, whoever has it, feel free. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. See, that is in the Bible. That love covers a multitude of sins. Now, sometimes you'd be thinking, did they make that up? <laughs> but it's true. It's true. When you love somebody, you can overlook a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously. Uh, and sometimes that's scary even when you keep it in context, when you see how much people are willing to overlook because of love. But then, that's from a human perspective. But when we would embrace that from God's perspective, see, just think about how much more willing we would be as a church to get involved in people's lives. See, ministry is messy. You know, when you start getting involved with people and you got to deal with them lying, first of all, to themselves, then being totally dishonest with you. Now, you know if they're lying to themselves, the lie to you is nothing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they so twisted yeah. in the devil's snare to, right. even though you clearly just there to hell, they can't see that. Right. And it's gonna cost something, emotion, you know, to be, to have your hand, to have your hand out to really wanna lift somebody up and maybe have them to, to thrust your hand away, or to talk about you badly, or to misinterpret your intentions altogether completely. And yet, being motivated by God to be involved, you'll still be willing to stay right there. That you will now become more creative or listen to the Holy Spirit even harder to see how is God opening a door for you to do what he say do. Because if he told you to do it, he's going to open the door for you to be able to do it. Right? I mean, that's a serious filter. Yeah. You know, I mean, when God wants me to go somewhere, he makes provisions for me to be able to get there. Mm -hmm. He just does. And that don't mean that I may not have to go out and seek or get in motion. Because we have to. Yeah. Sometimes. But what he's saying here, and he's reminding us that Love will really put you in a place to where you'll be able to absorb a lot of abuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you ever really tried to minister to somebody and they're really like in a demonic place and they're cussing <laughs> you out? Mm -hmm. And you still just extending love? Right. But I've had that happen and then have people to come back once they're in their right mind and say, you know, because I used to work in the state hospital. And I remember once we had to restrain a guy. And he told me later, he says, I remember you. You was being real nice to me that day. He said, they was all trying to hold me down. She said, but you was talking to me real calm. And you was being real nice. Now, in the instance when that was going on, he was totally out of his mind. Mm -hmm. It was six, six of us, six men plus me, trying to restrain this guy with a mattress on top of him to keep, so nobody would get hurt. Mm. But... When we do things in love, that penetrates all of that. Right. Even if people can't respond to it right now. You know, that's why the Bible says that when we treat people with love, it's like heaping coals of fire on them. Right. You know, it just melts it. You know, I often think of it like the old cone incense thing. You, know? <laughs> I mean, you put that fire on it, it just melts. Yeah. You know, it's hard to begin with. You know, sometimes we've been disappointed, we've hurt, we got all this 
abuse and we we got PTSD. You know, even in our families, sometimes the hurt has been so severe, the trauma has been so severe, till we got post traumatic stress mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. And God still wants to use us in ministry. So how do you filter that out? How do you filter that out? You have to filter that out through the, through the Holy Spirit. You have to allow him to give you discernment so you're not enabling somebody in their wrong. But you're actually being used to edify and build them up. And when you're doing that, you won't be gossiping and running people down. God don't like it when we talk about our brothers and sisters. Come on now. Psalms 50 said, you, you slander your mother's son, mm. and you thought I was just like you. Uh -huh. God's not pleased with that. That's good. But if we don't love God, then we'll be trying to get likes on Instagram or, or on our Facebook page by putting somebody's business out there, uh, like trying to make them look small to make us look bigger. And God ain't in that. But unfortunately, people that even belong to the church are doing these things. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this lesson. See, God is reminding us that it's really important that we be in love with him if we want to walk in full giftedness. It's amazing that people want the gifts of God but don't want the struggle, don't want the, the pressing that's necessary for the, for the anointing to flow, mm -hmm. you know? It, to get the, 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 the oil, they had to crush the olives. Yeah, yeah. And, and the grapes, too, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I'm sure it's, the, it's uncomfortable having been crushed for God's use. Mm -hmm. But when you love him, you, you, you're willing to do that. Mm -hmm. You're willing to stay right there because you... You know he's got a plan. He's got a purpose for all of this. And you know that it's going to be good. You just you just really maybe in your own heart, you maybe just pray, Lord, let me be around and see part of the fruit. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, but and I say it that way because you don't want to get caught up with trying to be a fruit inspector. Mm -hmm. You know, because one plant, another waters, but God gives the increase. Right. And early in ministry, I used to get discouraged when you're really pouring into somebody's life and it seemed like they're not getting any of it. That's okay. Keep on pouring. Keep on pouring. Keep on praying. Amen. See? Because even then, God is at work. Don't seem like it. You know? But God is at work. And, and when we in love with Him, then we're reminded of that because... Our fellowship with him is ongoing and constant. So the greatest benefit I'd like to leave you with as we come to an end for today is that right now, even when I was listening to the pastor, he was talking about those old songs and how they made him feel. And I couldn't help but think about, even as a child when I heard those songs, those songs made me feel loved and safe. You know, when, when you hear them old hymns and they stomping their feet and they getting all into it, talking about what Jesus will do, yeah. it made me feel safe. Yeah. You know, even in social unrest, even in, in economic turmoil, I felt peace. Because yeah. the fellowship with God brought that. Yeah. So as we're thinking about this love, John, see, yeah. I, I don't know how a person can, because can, it's always dangerous for somebody to talk you into your girl. You know, I never wanted nobody to go talk to my girl for me, right? Because I saw that go sideways a couple of times. <laughs> but I want to tell you, I, I wish I could just help you to be more in love with Jesus. Amen. You know, that if there was something I could just say just right now, just to make you remember just how much he's done for us. Because yeah. this whole love Jones thing, when more of us get that, we're going to have greater power here in this church. Amen now. You know, I mean, it, it's flowing right now. But when it gets to flowing from breast to breast with no pockets of ill will, mm -hmm. with no pockets of disobedience, right. and no pockets of stubbornness and, and, and hatred, uh, when it gets to flowing all the way through, then that's when we're going to shake up this whole community. Amen. 
See, because people going, that's going to resonate. That's going to resonate. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I want to become even more gifted so that I could be part of that. Part of that resounding glory to God for all that he's already doing. Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you for our time with you this morning. We thank you for this lesson, Lord. We don't know how to say it properly, but we don't want to be pumped up to love you because you've already done enough that we should recognize what you've done. So we thank you for loving us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for providing and, and being a shield for us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for being light and darkness and for giving us wisdom and understanding, Lord. We pray for your namesake that you would help us to embrace you more. Forgive us for those moments and times and lapses when we were in love with the world, Lord. We know that there's hostility towards you. So help us to hate the world like you do. Help us not to try to make up excuses why we got to love the world more and compromise more, Lord. Lord, we want our words to match up with our actions. Yeah. And we want to demonstrate through our actions how much you mean to us. Lord, help us to stay in fellowship help with you. Lord. So no unconfessed sin, let it abide in our lives, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that reminds us of the things that is displeasing to you. And everything that he brings to our mind, Lord, make us quick to apologize sincerely to you so that our fellowship would not be broken. Lord, we come today wanting to hear a word from you. We pray that you will be with us as we go outside to fellowship. Keep our hearts and minds steadfast upon the one who paid the ultimate price on Calvary. Lord, none of us could have done that, and you did it in our stead. So we appreciate you, and we thank you for it. We want to speak highly of you. We want to remember all of the things that you brought us through, all of the dangers seen and unseen, Lord. Think of all the health issues that you've taken care of on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Lord, most importantly, we thank you for keeping us in this pestilence. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for keeping up our protection around our families, yeah, Lord. Lord. We thank you that we haven't lost our minds even in the house, Lord. But you keep on giving us love for one another. Mm -hmm. Help us, Heavenly Father, to love you so that we can love each other more. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory and praise. We thank you for all of this in the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture is, all scripture is given by.